is another word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry, raw and uncut productions. Uh, perfect time for the word. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475 300 Five zero twenty four hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. Should I pray? Should I pray? All right. You can pray if you want to. All right. It's on you. All right. No problem. All right. yeah. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. And we also, praise God, have a prophet with us. <laughs> Lord. And the Lord is going to use us to work together. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get into the Word. He's going to use us to do this together. That 
he be glorified in this, okay? So we're, we're going to have a very powerful, powerful broadcast, and um, it's really late. It's after 3 in the morning on September 21st, 2021, and I have to say that for record's sake and for the law. Now, I'd like to ask you to grab your Bibles and turn to Second Chronicles. And no, we're not going to do the familiar uh, chapter 7, but we're going to go to ver uh, chapter uh, 18. And while you're finding that, let me open up with a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, yes, Lord. we come before you asking you to forgive us. Forgive us. For all of our sins, all shortcomings, us. Yes, Lord. our faults, our wrongs, Thank everything you. we have said, done, thought, and felt yes, Lord. that is not pleasant in your sight. Thank you, Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, to give us a word. Yes, give me a word yes, to share. I have nothing written, yes, Lord. but you already wrote it. Yes, <laughs> I'm asking, Lord, that you pour out your wisdom. Yes, Lord that we should hear what thus saith the Lord, yes. and that we should get into you. your word yes. and do what you said. Yes. We just thank you for everything. Everything. We just thank you for everything. Ask that you move in a body way. Yes. Minister to those that you have handpicked yes. to sit around the television, yes. the computer, or driving in their car, or whichever way they're listening to this or watching it, yes. minister to them, Lord, because we are in dire need of your hand to move in our lives. Oh, glory. And we just thank you for everything. Some of us are fasting. Yes. Some of us are just praying. Yes. All of us are going through something Some. or another. Some. But at any rate, yes. we need you. To move in a mighty way. Yes. Show us your glory. Yes. Yes. Allow us to see yes. that you're with us. Yes. We love you, Lord. Yes. And we ask that you have mercy. Yes. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Again, I'd like to ask you to turn to Second Chronicles chapter 18. And I'm reading out of the King James Version. And it's going to be a very powerful. Let, let's just go as the Lord lead. But I, I still like to ask you to turn your Bible to Second Chronicles chapter 18. And I'm coming out of the King James Version. And here we go now. Now Jehoshaphat had riches. This verse 1. And honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. And for certain years, he went down to, a excuse me, and after certain years, he went down to Ahab, to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance. And for the people that he had with him, and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as, thou as thy people. Yes. And we will be with thee in the war. Yes. And Jehoshaphat, said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Yes. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together the, of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? 
And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes. And they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Canana, or Canano, had made him horns of iron and <laughs> said, Thus saith the Lord, with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. Did you read it? I don't know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Said it, speak thou good. Oh God. Say what the other ones are saying. Just copy it. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God said, that will I speak. Mm -hmm. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah. Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return therefore every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle. But put thou on thy robe. So the king of Israel disguised himself and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore, he said to his chariot man, Turn thine hand that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. He died. Now let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 18 Deuteronomy chapter 18 
I guess you, you're gonna do this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 18. And let's notice verse 17. No, let's go back to verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will record require it of him but the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or that shall speak in the name of other gods even that prophet shall die and if thou say in thine heart how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord if the thing follow not nor come to pass. That is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of it. Let's say our grace. Father, again in the name of Jesus, we come before you asking you to forgive us for all of our sins and shortcomings and faults and wrongs. Thank you for this, this word. Thank yes. you for this time of gathering. Yes. I'm asking that you pour into thy servant, that you may use thy servant to share what you give me to share. Thank you, thank you for the studio. Thank you for the equipment. Thank you for everything and everywhere that you have blessed this ministry. I ask that you bless those that pour into the ministry, those that sow into the ministry this morning yes. or whenever they're watching this broadcast. Yes. I ask that you replenish what they share, and that it be used in the ministry where it's supposed to go as you direct. Thank you for everything. And now, allow me to decrease that you may increase. Fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Orchestrate this whole, uh, this whole broadcast. Allow me to decrease that you may increase. We rebuke the devil and we plead the blood of Jesus. Against. Oh, oh, glory. And we thank you for everything. Have mercy, Father. Minister to your children. Because we are all asking you to speak to us. Everyone that you have watching this broadcast or listening to it by CD or, or, or audio cassette or watching by DVD or VHS or computer or YouTube or whatever. Any platform, yes, you have a watching for a reason. Yes, and now you speak, Holy speak. Ghost. <laughs> Glory to yes, God. In Jesus' name, Jesus. we thank you and we pray. Yes, Amen. 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 Go ahead, brother. Let God use you. Ministry. The word. Ministry means service, a service unto God. Yes. It is very, very important that when you decide to embark upon entering into the ministry, that it is not something you feel like doing, Neither is it something that someone else puts you up to. It is very important that when you enter into the ministry, that you enter into it because you've been called by God. 
Because when you're called by God, he's going to train you first. And then he's going to send you out. I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles real quick to the book of Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now this word perfection in the Greek means maturity. Not, a, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Brother Paul was saying, let us not keep going over the same thing. Amen. There's a lot of times that people attend ministry and during the time of what they might call or, or be told that is called training, they might keep hearing the same messages over and over and over again. And what happens is when they are sent out, when man decides to send them out, they go out sounding like the one that they just sat under. That's right. That's right. And that's what they do. It's very important that your training comes from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yes. That he is the one that teaches you. That's right. Because the devil, he trains people too. Yes. And there's many other beliefs out there mm -hmm. that claim that they are serving the only true and living God and they're not. Paul said, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, that means the basics, let us go on to maturity uh -huh. in ministry. Yeah. Because it's important that God use us ministers, us leaders, those of us in the fivefold ministry, to be used by him to feed his people as he would use us to do because as, as as listen catch this revelation the things that the Lord teach you are going to come into play later on at another time why because this this walk that we're on this is a this is a faith walk and we are going to face many trials. And every time God brings you through one trial, there's always going to be another trial in the wings waiting for you to get to a certain point. It's, don't ever, listen, when you hear ministers say, well, all you do is give your life to the Lord and your life will be peachy keen, it'll be easy, you'll never have to go through trials again. God will always come to your beck and call soon as you call God, he'll appear. No, that's, that's, that's <laughs> not accurate. Amen. Amen. In the beginning of your walk, uh -huh. when God wants to establish himself with you, he may do that then. Right. But once you get to a certain level in him, once you get to a certain place it in changes. him, the, the, the things change. once he takes you up a notch or two, yes. when you call on God, yeah. He might not come right away. That's right. And the older people could tell you that because they, they got a saying, you know. Uh -huh. The older people would say, and it's not written per se, uh -huh. but it's implied in Scripture, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on, on time. time. On time. Oh, glory. Yes. He's always on time. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's important that the ministry you go to or that you fellowship with are feeding you. Uh -huh. Because if they're feeding you, then when you start going through things, you're gonna be equipped and you're gonna be prepared. Right. Now, if you're not equipped and you're not prepared, then you're really gonna be going through some things. Right. It's gonna be rough. Right. 
Paul said, again, therefore, verse 1, Hebrews 6, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. Then he said, verse 3, and this will we do if, if God, God permits. permits. What will we do? We'll go on. Right. We'll go to the next level. Right. But in order to go to the next level, you have to master or understand the basics. Because everything is built on the basics. Right. Verse 4, Paul said, as the Lord told him to write, For it is impossible, impossible. for those who were once enlightened mm -hmm. and have tasted of the heavenly gift, which is the bread of life, uh -huh. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, which they witnessed the movement of God, uh -huh. and have tasted the good word of God, which is spiritual food, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, That's right. seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. That's right. They become apostates. Yes. Not apostles. Right. Apostates. Apostates. Because Without understanding what you're learning, you will end up going forward and falling and getting in all kind of traps of the enemy, and he will throw you. Yes. Because he knows what you like. Right. We used to follow Satan before we came to Christ. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. When Brother Paul was used by the Holy Ghost to write about spiritual gifts, he said, verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. That's right. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, Gentiles. carried away unto these dumb idols, even as, as ye were, were led. led. Mm -hmm. Jump over to Ephesians chapter 2. And let's notice verse 1. Mm -hmm. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time passed ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince, prince of, the of the power of the air. That's, That's right. Satan. That's right. Now a lot of people say the devil has no power, but they don't understand. The enemy of God has power power. The Bible calls him. This God, God told Paul to write this. He called him the prince of the power, power of, of the, the air. air. So yeah. all of these, you know, this is what I don't understand about this nation. These other nations that don't serve the God of heaven, the only true and living God, when they go through all kind of catastrophes, dealing with weather, dealing with, with floods, dealing with tsunamis dealing with earthquakes and this and that and their whole their whole city or their whole state gets ruined the question is why 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 did it get ruined why did it get flooded out why, why? listen when you follow Satan you will get what Satan gets. Because there's nothing good about him. Nothing. Not one thing. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's been a murderer since the beginning. He goes against God. He's, he is contrary to God. There, there's a lot of people that are in secret societies and secret fellowships and secret organizations and you don't even know what they really believe in when you join these things 
you do it for prestige and because it makes you look good. But you don't understand something. The devil is not going to come to you and say, here I am. He's not going to do that. Even in the Garden of Eden, when he appeared in the garden after God put Adam in there, he told Adam to dress it and to keep it. That was Adam's ministry. To dress it meaning to decorate the garden. To keep it means to protect the garden. So everything in the garden, Adam was to guard. He was to protect. So when the enemy came in there, he didn't come in as himself because he would have been the most ugliest thing in the garden. But what he did is he used the body of a serpent. Yes. And when he came in there, uh -huh. Adam and Eve fell because they didn't they, they, they didn't act according to the anointing that they were crowned with. That's right. Mm -mm, not at all. That's right. Adam was supposed to guard the God, mm -hmm. but he didn't. Right. While the enemy was talking through the body of this serpent, talking to Eve because they were made in such a way at the time before the fall that they could understand things that we'll never be able to understand. They could understand sounds and languages and things that we just couldn't understand. We, we'll never be able to get there. The serpent was talking to Eve and he challenged her. He said, did God really say? Did God really say? Right. So anything that Eve knew about the garden, she that learned it from her husband. Right. But that lie she did not learn from her husband. That's right. When she stepped out of order, her vision was off. Satan set her up. Her operation was off mm -hmm. because she was out of order. She should have turned to her husband and said, honey, help me. That's right. Honey, protect me. That's right. Honey, didn't you say God told you to guard the garden? And then even if she didn't do that, which she didn't, Adam should have said, excuse me, why are you talking to my wife? That's right. Why are you interfering with my wife? What, what do you want? Get out of here. He had the authority to put Satan out of the garden. Now, at another time, we'll talk about why. Satan did this. He wanted to throw everything out of whack. Yes. And that's what he tries to do now. Right. When you look at this world, this world is going through problems. There's corruption on the forefront. Yes. When you look at the government, corruption. Yes. When you look in the place that they say is the place of worship, corruption right. and carnality right. how many ways but let's look at this for a minute in the ministries they're so busy trying to get into the political arena and the the, the taking sides politically when that has nothing to do with you nothing you are supposed to be under theocracy right. and not bureaucracy right when you have surrendered to god when you really follow him, right. he becomes your president. He becomes your governor. He becomes your mayor. He becomes your alderman. He becomes your senator. Of course, he tells us to pray for those in authority because we, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, following the real Jesus, not the other Jesus or any other Jesus, but the real Jesus, we have authority in Christ. Because we are joint in. We are not of this world. That's right. We're in it, but we're not of it. Not of it. And that's another problem. Because a lot of people who say they follow the Lord, they're very carnal. Very carnal. Turn your Bible back to 1 Corinthians and let's notice chapter 3. Verse 1, Brother Paul said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. 
I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. He said before you couldn't bear it, now you can't bear it. You have not even grown. Then he said, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal? and walk as men you're not walking as spiritual children of god but you're walking carnal as regular natural men and women for while one saith i am of paul right. and another i am of apollos Apollos. are ye not carnal so now he's telling them that you are choosing or lifting up the minister. Yeah. One lift up, some lifted up Paul, some lifted up Apollos. Both of them were apostles, but the people were lifting up the leader and not lifting up Christ. That's right. Brother Paul said, who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers, meaning servants, by whom ye believe even as the Lord gave to every man. Now he asked a question, so I'm going to read it that way. Right. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even, even as, as the, the Lord, Lord gave, gave to every man? every man? And leaders are wrong for allowing you to lift them up like that. That's not humility. So therefore, when ministers fall, when they get exposed, when they get caught up in something, the people are surprised and say, <coughs> excuse me, and they say, oh my goodness, did you, you know what pastor did or apostle did or, or, or prophet or prophetess did or evangelist did or the teacher did? Oh my goodness. Why are you surprised? Why, why are you surprised? You shouldn't be. In 1 Corinthians, still, chapter 10 verse 13 brother Paul was led to write there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man that's right to struggle is common to go through things are common I know that you look at the minister and think that oh glory I hear you Lord and think the minister got it yes think the minister got it all together but the minister don't the higher the minister is in the Lord, the harder the trials they're going to go through. I'll tell you, it's easy to walk in the pastoral office. Now, those of y'all that are pastors, you say it's not. I understand that. But those of us that are apostles, God use us. We're the only us, us men. We are the only apostles, the only office that walks in all four of the other ones. Women are not apostles. This, this is not scripture. It's not in the word. So I'm not even talking to you. I'm talking to the brothers. Mm -hmm. And those of you brothers that are in the office of apostles, you understand. We are the only ones that walk in all four of the other offices. So it's easy to walk as pastor. That, that's easy. I, we can do that with our eyes closed. It's easy to evangelize, to walk as an evangelist. We can do that with our eyes closed. It's easy to walk as a prophet. We can do that with our eyes closed. A prophet is a male prophetess is a female so get it right sisters those sisters that are in the prophetic office stop saying you are a prophet because you're not you're a prophetess that's what the bible says now you got to be careful because if you're confused about your gender then you need to sit down it's easy to walk as a teacher it's, it's, it's easy when you learn. When you learn, it's easy. When you study the word, it's easy. When you're anointed to explain the word, it's easy to walk as a teacher. But when you are standing in the office of apostle and the Holy Ghost has anointed you to walk in all four of the other offices, can you imagine the trial that we have to face? That's right. Even in marriage, 
We can't just marry anyone and have That's a right. peaceful marriage That's like right. a lot of other people do. That's right. I, listen, every office has trials set for that anointing and that office. Tell it, brother. So I understand the trials of a prophet because I'm part prophet. I understand, and, and brother apostles, you can test, you can attest to this. We apostles understand the trials of an evangelist because we're part evangelist. We understand the trials of a pastor because we're part pastor. We understand the trials of a teacher because we're part teacher. But a teacher does not understand the trial of an apostle. The prophet does not understand the trial of an apostle. If you're a prophet, I strongly encourage you and suggest that you stay right there. <laughs> you Stay right there. Amen. That's what God called you to do. Amen. If he's anointed you as a prophet, stay there. Amen. Don't try to jump up and you want to elevate yourself and become an apostle. Don't do it. Because if you can't handle the trial that comes with this office, you will fall. If you're an evangelist, don't try to jump up and be pastor. Because if you can't handle the trial of a pastor, you will fall. Don't be, uh, if, if, if you're a pastor, don't jump up trying to be a prophet. Don't jump up trying to be an apostle. Don't do it. Because if you can't handle the trials we go through, you will fall. That's right. If you're a, what they call a minister, a, 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 a music minister, mm -hmm. which actually that would be a psalmist, a psalmist. A psalmist. but a some have went in error and entered into the pastoral office. Mm -hmm. There's people that even get doctorates because they buy it or they have an uncle or a cousin or a relative who is able to give them a doctorate. But the way you tell a teacher is a teacher comes out of this book and will not walk away from it and just build a whole sermon on one word or one verse. That's right. That's a preacher. Right. That's, that's not a teacher. Right. A lot of you are, 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 are at ministries where the person you think is a teacher is really not. How can you tell? You might want to know. Again. Notice I'm staying in the Word. I ain't even got nothing written. And all of this is coming straight off the press in heaven. Again, in the book of Hebrews. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I hope you're ready, brother. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I hope you're ready. I am. In the book of Hebrews. What chapter? Again, verse chapter 6. Oh. Verse 1. Brother Paul said, therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine of Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, we need to go on. Stop, stop staying there. And there's, there's some ministries you're going to. Here's the test. Bring a, bring a notebook and a pen. <laughs> and take notes from the lesson. That's right. When you go home, Compare the note each week. Compare it. Are you hearing the same thing over and over again? Better yet, go in Scripture and look up what you're being told. Is it coming out of the Word or do you see error? If you're not getting fed, then that leader need to sit down and you need to stop lifting them up and lift up the Lord God the Lord Jesus Christ we're getting ready to in our segment back to second Chronicles chapter 18 Jehoshaphat he was the king of Judah and Ahab was going to go against Ramoth Gilead. But Ahab asked Jehoshaphat, would he, would he posse up with him? Would he, would he side with him? 
with? Would he join with? Can we network? I need some help. All of us in ministry need help. That's right. We, we do. That's right. Even though apostles are used by God in all four of the other offices, it's, it's a blessing if when God uses us to walk with someone that's in one of them offices, that takes a little weight off of us. That's right. Because when you got to walk in all four other offices, it's a blessing. And thank you, Lord, for using us apostles that way. But we are team players, and we love to see God use the other gifts. You might say, wow, apostle is hard. That's because we are, are used by the Lord to uh, encourage you to walk according to your calling and your election. That's right. To make it sure. In other words, to prove, make full proof of the ministry, the service God called you to do. So apostles are going to be tough. We're not going to be soft and passive and, and oh, poor thing. Those are pastors. We, we, we're not going to be that way. We're not. We got to be tough because Jesus will be coming back soon. And, 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 and we don't want to be left behind. Ahab asked Jehoshaphat to go with him. And when Jehoshaphat went to go visit Ahab, he killed sheep and oxen, a whole bunch of them, and enough to feed the people that were with him. And he persuaded him to go up to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, southern Israel, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art. In other words, yes. Where you go, I'll go. I'm with you. I'm on one accord with you. And my people as thy people. That's right. And we will be with thee in the war. So I said, yes. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee. At the word of the Lord today. Today. Let, let's pray about this. Right. But but you know, theologically, prayer is a two-sided conversation between man and God. Man talks, woman talks, God listens. Then after we pour ourselves out, it's important to stay still and wait and let God respond. And if you can't hear God's voice because you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, get into the Word. Look up the subject you're praying about and see what the Word says about it. Then you'll know the answer. Because when people use a cliche, or oh, I pray about it, they're lying. Mm -hmm. Even in relationships, mm -hmm. a man meets a woman and say, you know, the Lord said, you'd make a good wife. He, he told me to pursue you. Well, I'll pray about it. Okay, now, those of us that are prayer warriors and that have a relationship with God, what well, we know when, a, when we say we'll pray about it, that means we turn our plate down. That's that right. means we spend some time with That's God. Right. That's we right. sit before him and say, That's Lord, right. yes. yay or nay. Yes. But when people say that and don't do it, mm -hmm. they're con. Right. And then when they come, Three or four days later, and you ask him, did God answer yet? No, nah, he didn't. Well, did you ask him? No, nah, I've been busy. Carnal. And right there, guess what? Carnal. Carnal. They are purely carnal. Yes. Purely carnal. Yes. And God said, everybody saying, Lord, Lord, is not going to heaven. That's right. Just because they go to some ministry, just because they say, Lord, just because they do this, just because they... They, they do what they call shout, which a lot of times that's pure emotion. Just because they do all that, just because ministers will throw something in the air and make you fall or blow their breath, stinking breath sometimes, on you, and make, on you and make you fall, that don't mean that they are powerful. It don't mean they're going to heaven. And it really don't mean that God called them. Right. Just because they got on the collar, it don't mean God called them. That's right. Mm -mm. Witches and warlocks. We're college. That's right. Not only that, homosexual ministers who God don't even have nothing to do with, they wear college. That's right. Because they got to appear to be the real deal. And if you don't know the real deal, then you stuck. That's right. 
So Jehoshaphat said, can we talk to the Lord about this? Because the, the real minister, the man and woman of God, we know, don't take no step if God don't say go. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together a prophet, 400 men. Now, this is what Ahab did. Now, those of you that know about his wife Jezebel, when she left her father's palace and married Ahab, she came with 850 false prophets. There was 450 prophets and there was 400. Ahab got together the 400 men, the prophets, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, excuse me, go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, mm -mm. is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? A lot of ministers. A lot of ministers won't use the prophet and prophetess of the house. Why? Because they know the mess that that minister and that ministry got going on. That's right. So what they do is they'll call somebody that's going to tell them what they want to hear. They'll call their nephew or their family or their best friend or the one they do the dirt with or the one they sin with. In some cases, the one they sleep with. And they say to them, come and speak and have a speaking engagement. Here's what y'all sheep don't know. There's ministers that have fundraisers and call it a speaking engagement because they're exchanging money. I'll come to your ministry and put 500 in. You come to mine and put 500 in. Neither one of them are going to the house of God because God is not in that mess. He's not in that. And then when they come with contracts, this is what I want to get paid. So now you want to get paid for ministry. Then they do the free will offering. I got to tell you, I got to tell you the truth. When they come with the contract and they get paid, that's earned income and they got to pay taxes on that. But when they say, all right, I'm going to collect also a free will offering, that is a donation and they don't have to even report that to the IRS. So you've been had. You've been took, hood away. You, right. You've been bamboozled. <laughs> You've been led astray. You've been run amok. Been this is what's going on in these places of worship. And that's why God allowed that coronavirus spirit to be launched out by Satan to come and to close the places that y'all call the place of worship. We get ready to close, but because we got to hit on that note right there. But the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, "There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imlah." And Jehoshaphat said, "Let not the king say so. Don't go speak bad about the brother." Can't call him. Let me meet him. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne clothed in their robes. So they had on their guard. Okay? Their clergy guard, looking all good and deep. And they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria. They sat wearing rich apparel. They had it going on. They were looking good. And they sat uh, on the throne and while they were sitting there, all the prophets prophesied. They, they, made a, they, they made fools out of themselves, you might as well say. Because what happened was Zedekiah, the son of Canaanor, had made him horns of iron. Now, how did he do that? He must have picked up some iron and did like this, I don't know, and <laughs> said, 
Thus saith the Lord, with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. He was whack. So Canano built his prophetic ministry on a sign. And that's what a lot of people do. They're building the ministry on a sign. And you can't do that. You can't do that. Because when you do that, you end up in error. That's carnal also. The Lord is telling me to jump all the way. Well, all right, I'm, I'm just going to read through because I got to get to a certain point so the Lord can use uh, the other half, might as well say. But he said, Thus said the Lord, with these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied, saying, they prophesied so, meaning all of them agreed, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the live, of the king. Excuse me. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. They don't want a court. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thy good. So he tried to uh, entice him to agree with them. That's wrong. Don't be afraid to be different. That's right. Don't be afraid to be the one that hears God and relay God's message. If That's they don't right. call you to speak later for them, it's a blessing when God give you a platform and a work to do for him. Don't compromise. Don't compromise, brother. Don't compromise, sister. Don't do it because you will pay. And at the end of this, remember, Ahab died. So you will pay. Don't do that. A lot of ministers are getting hit with that COVID-19. And they say, how? You need to check the ministry. Check your walk. If the devil got that close to you, you need to check your walk. If the enemy got that close to you, you need to check your walk. Because if you're walking, listen, if you're walking with God, the devil cannot come and Hallelujah. attack you yes. while the Lord is standing right there. That's right. He's not that bad. He can't do that. The Lord is a protector. He guards us. Some people challenge the quote, once saved, always saved. They say that's not accurate. But scripture implies that. Even Jesus said, no man can pluck you out of my father's hand. If you're really, 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 really saved, yes. you will not leave God. Not at all. You won't do it. You just, you just won't do it. That's right. They told him, that, that, that messenger told Micaiah, agree with the prophets. Say what they said. Don't get the king upset. Micaiah said, verse 13 of Second Chronicles 18, he said in verse 13, as the Lord liveth, even what my God saith, that will that I speak. Will I speak. Yes. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Now that king knew that it wasn't going to be successful anyway. That's why his prophets, he got 400 that he gathered to put on this play. While he told the messenger, go get Micaiah, go get him. But in the meantime, all these prophets trying to be deep, the little clique, the group, listen, brother prophet, brother and sister prophetess, don't be part of the clique. Don't think that you got to roll with them. It don't matter if it's a hundred of them. Right. It don't matter if it's 800 of them. That's it right. don't mean God is with them. That's right. It don't mean that. That's 
because God always works the other way. He takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yes. The wise man says there's 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 unity, there's power and strength in numbers. God says, all I need is one. What? <laughs> one. <laughs> one. Yes. Why? Because that one vessel, all they got to do is agree with God. The one that's really going to be doing all the work is God. God is going to be doing the work, not the vessel. They're just going to agree. The king told him, man, I keep telling you, stop lying. Stop prophesying. Stop. Just tell me the truth. <laughs> See, he knew that this prophet was going to tell the truth. Some of the leaders of the ministry that you prophets and prophetesses go to, well, now you all are going to Zoom, but then there's some buildings that open for now because it's going to close again. Remember this word, it's going to close again. Everything's going to shut down again. That demon has not stopped. That demon has not left. Everything is going to shut down again, so you might as well get prepared. So anyway, watch, watch. Hear the word of the Lord. It's going to shut down again. So anyway, and, and today is September 21st, 2021. It's not shut down now, so that means this word of wisdom and this word of knowledge, watch. Pay attention. So anyway, don't be afraid and ashamed to be different that's right you don't need to be in the clique you don't need you don't need that a lot of y'all that are a part or fellowship with ministries yes lord they don't call on you because they know that you'll expose the mess you know what god just told me when i said yes lord you know what he just you know what he just said to me? What did he say, Apostle? What did he say? God said, they know. They know that you'll expose the mess. What else they what he say now? What did he say? Because they don't want. They know your walk. They know you're real. What did he say? They know you serve God. What did he say? A lot of them are envious. They don't want you to go no further. What That's why say? they'll call everybody else except you. But don't worry about that. Here's what God let me say. I was listening because I had left my spirit, but God just brought it back. Praise the Lord. Those of you prophets and prophetesses that go to a lot of the ministries, you're really only there on assignment anyway. Whoa. You're, Whoa. you're not there to join. That's right. You're not there to become a member. You're already a member of the body of Christ. The body of Christ. When God called you into ministry, he gave you a work. So whenever he want to use a prophet or a prophetess, he's calling on you. So when he send you to ministries and you be thinking, oh, I got to leave this ministry and go to that one. I need to find a church. You talk just like they do. The church is not a building. That's right. We are the church. We are. What That's you right. need to be saying is, Lord, where are you sending me at now? Right. And then find out why. Yes. Because you're going on assignment. Now those broken down ministers, when they see you come in, they go, wow, look at that fire and that anointing. Oh, brother and sister, God got you and he got a calling for you. Oh, we glad you're here. We love you. And then after the hype fades away, they have you sit down. Shut up. No, you can't. You can't speak. Sit, sit down. You, you have your time. You know, God, God moves in seasons. You'll have your time. Let's not get ahead of God. Oh, don't nobody be going around prophesying, telling nobody, thus saith the Lord. Tell it to me first. And being that I am the mouthpiece here, I'll tell if it's God or not. Don't fall for that mess. Don't fall for it. It's a trick it's crazy. because they know God is with you. Ahab had the 400 false prophets, fools, prophesied. Come on, make iron horns and say, 
Thus said the Lord, you're going to beat them up with this. You're going to push Syria. Oh, whatever. And then all the other ones, amen. Amen. Go ahead. You say that. Yes. Yes. Come on. <laughs> they need to be smacked. <laughs> oh, boy. They need to be smacked. So when Ahab said that, the king said, how many times shall I tell you that I adjure thee? How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good to me but evil? Again, he said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. He's talking about angels. These angels were responding. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Now, it's important to understand something about angelology here and demonology. This was not a holy angel because holy angels don't lie. Holy angels don't trick nobody. Holy angels don't deceive nobody. But God, see, demons work for Satan, but sometimes God will employ them to get something done that's going to bring God glory. That's right. It's just like how in the book of Job, Satan took from Job. He put Job through trial. But some of y'all don't know, but Job was self-righteous because he said, that which I have feared has come upon me. So he, he feared being poor because he was a king. His name was Jobab. Look in the book of Genesis. And what happened is the Lord allowed Satan to take stuff from Job. God didn't do it because God is not a taker. The devil is a thief. He took Job's stuff because God wanted Job to know it's not about your stuff. So the ministers who think they're having stuff, turn real quick. Don't lose Chronicles because we're getting ready to close with that. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6. 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse uh, start let's go to verse. No, I've got to start at verse one, right? Because right. if I go to verse three, we'll be walking into something. Right. Verse one says, Paul wrote the, to the the apostle Paul instructed the pastor Timothy. It don't go the other way around. Pastors don't instruct apostles or prophets or prophecies. They don't. I need to get that right. They don't do that. God uses the foundational giftings to help them, to encourage them, to sharpen their gift. Paul, the apostle, told Timothy, the pastor, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not the wholesome 
and consent not the listen to this and consent not the wholesome words even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and stripes of words whereof cometh envy strife wailings evil surmisings perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself the next verse says verse six but godliness with contentment is great gain great gain but those ministers that tell you money is godliness the more money you have the more god you have they're lying to you oh you gotta put a put a seed on it put a seed on your healing put a seed on your blessing give seven times seven times seven and God is going to bless you seven times. They're lying to you. A lot of people get a fake book and do all of this because they want your money. And a lot of you don't get a good harvest or a good return because you're sowing in the wrong place. Is this doctrine feeding you? Is the Lord ministering to you through this? Then let God use you to sow into good ground. I'm not trying to bamboozle you. I'm just opening up the opportunity. Let God use you to sow into good ground. Because the ministry feeds people. It's Here the it screen. is for something in the morning. And God got the man of God up and doing trick photography. Trick photography. <laughs> to feed you to be a blessing. This is the spirit of excellence. Right doing what God taught me to do. I've been a TV producer 25 years now. Praise God. I've earned my certificates. I've earned my certification Thank you, as Jesus. a TV producer Thank in you, studio Jesus. and field. Look. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. If the ministry is feeding you, Glory. if this is sound doctrine, so into the work. On the screen. Partner with the ministry. It's on the screen. So that we out. can continue helping people. Right now, we're helping COVID-19 survivors. Cash out on the screen. There, there'll be a commercial about that. You'll Cash see Cash out on the screen. Anyway, let God use you. Be a blessing in Jesus' name. This lying spirit, the Lord allowed this spirit to go to Ahab. And, and, and just leave, because Ahab wasn't going to follow the truth anyway. He didn't want to hear the truth. A lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Even people who are going through problems in their marriage. Some people God did not put you with. And people who God did not put you with, when God used a minister to tell that person God didn't put you with them, they don't want to hear that. They want to hear, oh, they're going to come back home. They're going to leave that other woman and the baby they made and, and that family they started. They're going to drop all of that and come back home to you. They don't call you. They don't see you. They don't bother with you. They're doing that, but they're going to leave all of that and come back home to you. No, they're not. And if they do, why would you want them? He could have a disease. She might have a disease. Why would you want them? What man in his right mind want to be with a woman that's out sleeping with other men? You nasty fool. What woman want a man that's out there sleeping with all these women? Doing this, that, that, this, and this, and that, and coming home and kissing you. Uh-uh. Why would you want that? Why the abuse? Why do you want to keep going through stuff like that? When God want to bless you, some of you, God have positioned, he's brought the man of God or the woman of God into your life to bless you with a holy and powerful marriage. Someone that's not going to lie to you, cheat on you, fight you, beat you up, none of that. They're going to love you with the love of God. And God is going to love you through them, but you don't want them. Why? Because you done been through so much mess that that's what you're accustomed to. Oh. So even you don't believe that oh. you deserve better than that. That's you better deep. wake up. That's deep. You better wake up. That's deep. Make it plain. Ahab didn't want to hear the truth. 
So he already was positioned in his life to hear a lie and believe it. And, and, and when the Lord said, how are you going to trick him? He said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. See, all them prophets, all 400 of them. <laughs> so it's not always the number that counts because the numbers could be wrong. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. God tell him it's going to work. It's going to work. You're going to entice him. Whatever you tell it's going to work. It's a plan. It's going to work. And do, go out and do even so. God said, go do it. See, because the Lord used a prophet to give warning. But Ahab didn't want to hear it. Some of you ministers, God got prophets and prophetesses right there in the house that told you. God said, don't make that move. They told you. God said, don't let that person come. They told you that God said something was coming and everybody need to go on a fast. You didn't listen. God used them to tell you. But you didn't listen. Instead, you listened to that other spirit. Uh-oh. Some sisters... I, I, I know somebody in particular. God has told the men of God to tell you, God said, you are the wife he sent. You are. You're her. And you say, and it's not just one person. There's a lot of people that do this. So this is, even though I know somebody particularly like this, that's going through this and, and under attack and got somebody fasting for them because they're not doing it themselves. There's a lot of people that do that. Though. So this this word right here is for many. You'll know who you are because this word will hit home. Sister God has sent the men of God to tell you God said you are the wife he sent. And you are saying God don't work that way. He know how I am. He know me. He know that in how you come to me. How are you going to critique God? Look at the relationship or the marriage you was in. Didn't you go through enough? Didn't you get lied to, cheated on, beat up, ridiculed enough? D didn't you? Some people say that I've been invisible all through the old marriage or the old covenant. And now God want to bless you because when you called out to God while you were crying, he healed you. He built you up. He let you know you are worth more than what you was going through. Amen. And now he want to bless you. Amen. But you won't let him do it. Because you'd rather hear a lie. You'd rather be with a liar. You'd rather go through what you've been going through. You don't want the saved man. Why? Because the saved man lives for God. And you ain't ready to leave the club. You're not ready to stop being a drunk. You're not ready to stop getting high. You're not ready to leave them lesbian friends alone. You're not ready to leave family members alone that's not saved. You're not ready for that. And what's going to happen? is you're going to pay. Because God said, I love you. I chose you. I want to bless you. And you said, no. I don't want to hear that. I'm not ready. Who do you think you are? Same with you, brother. Same way. You want the, the you want Twiggy. You want that. You want the women out there that's a freak, that's doing all kind of things. You don't want that woman of God that don't have a terrible reputation. You don't want her. You rather have the tramp. You're going to pay. Then when you end up with a disease, it's your fault because God tried to bless you. So God told that spirit, go, go ahead. It'll work. Then it says, verse 22, Now therefore, behold, the Lord 
have put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil against thee. This is what Micaiah told him. Now, when he said the Lord have put, you got to go into the Hebrew because it don't necessarily mean that God set him up because God's not that type of God, even against his enemies. They set themselves up, but the Lord gave that demon permission. There was no hedge of protection around Ahab. He had a lot of blood on his hands. He was, he was a trip. You should see his daughter, Athaliah, that him and Jezebel had. Athaliah, she was the only queen of Judah. That woman killed her whole family. When her son died, because he was the king of Judah, her son died, she took his throne and killed all her descendants, grandchildren and all. So that way, she wouldn't lose the throne. <laughs> that didn't work. There was one that hid from her. And then he took the throne, but he followed God. Verse 23 says, Then Zedekiah, the son of Canaan, you remember that guy with the, with the iron horns? <laughs> yeah. He came near and smacked Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself, the prophet was telling him, you're going to find out. You're going to find out. And then the king of Israel said, take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And say, thus said the king, put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, all ye people. Micaiah said, Y'all pay attention to this. Hear this word this day. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Rim of Gilead, and the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle, but you put on your robe. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. Now the king trying to be slick. See, he's trying to be slick. You ministers better watch who you hanging with and fellowshipping with, because if the person is a oh. crook, with you and a partner in crime with you, then you can't trust them because they won't be for you. A crook will still steal from you. That's right. A murderer will still kill you. That's right. A setup artist will still set you set up. You a liar up. will still lie on lie you. To you. Lie on you. Watch who you hang with. But some of y'all ain't paying attention because this is not going to break up the clique. This word is not going to break up the clique because some of you still going to do it. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to battle. They went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great. Save only the king of Israel. He sent him after the king. Go after the king of Israel. Israel was northern Israel. That's what Ahab was king of. Jehoshaphat was king of southern Israel. Right. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. See, the Lord was with the right one. God is with those of us that walk with him. But when you don't walk with God, and when you're trying to be slick and crooked and, and trying to run capers on the people, God is not with you. You proper liars. Male and female. God is not with you. There's a lady last name Dixon. I hope you're watching this. God is not with you. You was a female apostle and you said God told you come out of it. And then you came out of it. But still you got things that still say an apostle. You need to be smacked. Because you're hard headed. But you're going to you're gonna get it. You, you're going to get it. God's going to deal with you. He's tired. That's why he allowed this spirit, 
These demons, listen, coronavirus is not the only demon that's out there. There's a demon of lambda or lambin. Lambda. Lambda. That's a, another strand. Then there's a, a demon of, of mer, mer something from South Africa. Then there's um, that lambin. That's from that's coming from uh, uh, South New Orleans. Yeah. Louisiana. Then there's a, another one, the Delta thing. So there's four strands of demons out there, and it only started with one. But four are out there now. And the, the crooked government, that's the administration right now that everybody, including Colonel Christians, cheered for. We want, I call him Joseph Iscariot. We want Joe. We want Joe. Look what he did. He lied to every last one of y'all. The government took payola and put him in as a puppet. Now he walking around like this, don't know which way is up, which way is down. <laughs> he don't know if Monday got a T in it or an O. And, and, and he's even saying to that old lady, the old bat, he's saying, and you know what I'm talking about, he's saying to her, I'll say anything you want me to say, Nance. What do you want me to say? She's running things, and all of y'all now are saying, we don't want him no more. Why? Like Gas saw. went up, bills that went up, mm -hmm. everything that went up. The man lied to all of you because you were carnal. You were on his side. Then he said, take a vaccine. Here, here go a carrot. You take a vaccine, I'll give you a thousand dollars. When he get when that fourteen hundred dollar stimulus came out, it was bait. We took it. Yeah, we all took it. I took it and used it in the ministry. Sure did. Because people don't want to sow into the ministry. They're playing games. They want to sow into crooked stuff. Now you got the foreigners are fake book cloning people page. And I tell people all the time, you need to every now and then go into the fake book search. I call it fake book because it's fake. It's fake. It's not real. You go into the search and you type their name and see if you got another page that you don't know nothing about. Because there's foreigners that are cloning pages. They're taking your picture and going through your page after they make up a name and you accept their friend request. They make up a page and use some of your pictures and try to pass themselves off as you. And then they send friend requests to you and to those that are already on your friend request. You, you better pay attention to what's going on. Then those of you that... These Africans and them invite y'all to let's come to Nigeria to preach. You go there and won't come back. You better wake up. Because they want position. Because you want position. Yeah. Bad enough, fake book, let anybody be up there. And and I know a lot of ministers up there that go to somebody's service on Sunday, then as soon as the service is over, they want to stand whole in the ministry. Bunch of, whole Hello, bunch of them. brothers and sisters. And then they want to we re preach what the preacher just preached. Then there's guys doing the same thing, preaching what the preacher just preached. Everybody is taking something that was for them and they trying to 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 cut it and put it back out to you. There's so much wickedness going on. But people gonna pay. Those of us that are walking with the Lord, I want to encourage you with this. It's time to fast. St I've been on a fast since early May. A 12-hour absolute fast. No liquid, no food. Every day, 12 hours. Sometimes a double fast. Like, if God leave me, like I started mine 3 o'clock this morning. Here it is now, uh, almost quarter to 5. So when the Lord blessed me to go to sleep, and I wake up, whatever time that is, I'm going to jump on the fast then too. So when 3 o'clock uh, later today comes and that fast is over, I'll still be on the fast from when I woke up and jumped on the fast. Because this is the time for that. And, and you, you got to fast. You got to fast. You got to fast. You got to pray. You got to turn your plate down. You got to intercede. I'm fasting for people, certain people, specific people. I'm fasting for specific things. I'm not going to tell you what. I'm doing, you know, this is what you need to do. It's time to fast. And there's people that use that word. Oh, I'm going to fast too. They jump on it and can't stay on it. Why? Because they're not there. They're, they're not there. That's too much for them. 
They see you do something and think they can do it. You, and you can't do that. Your, your walk got to be your walk, and it got to be lined up with God. And if it's not, you're going to pay. You, you're going to pay. Some things you go through is because you bought it on yourself. You, you're going to pay. When there was, when when Jehoshaphat cried out, verse 31, Second Chronicles chapter 18, says the Lord helped him and God moved them to depart from him. So God moved the enemy away from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the church perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow, a bow, oh, oh. out of venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore, he said to his chariot men, turn thine hand, this is what Ahab said, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. Ahab just got hit with an arrow, trying to be slick. And he told the driver, get me out of here. I'm wounded. And the battle increased that day. Howbeit, the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the evening, which means the evening. And about the time of the sun going down, he died. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Forgive us for our faults and for our wrongs. Minister to us and talk to us. In Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing us and for answering us. I thank you for this word and bless it to feed your children. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. God bless you. Your turn, brother. Let the Lord do it. Well, that was a blessed word, brother. God really used you with that. Very powerful. Very powerful. I'd like to ask you to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. Excuse me. You got your paper? Yeah, it's in, it's in here. 1 Corinthians. I'd like to ask you to turn your Bible to. Because what the Lord just used the apostle to say is very, very powerful. And you, you got to understand the point of all of this. I thought I had Praise my the Lord. I really don't need my paper. I can go whole nother direction, but uh, another, well, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I don't know where my paper is. I thought I had it. First Corinthians chapter five. Excuse me. Oh, there it is. Got it. I got it. Second Corinthians chapter five. Oh my goodness. Okay, verses 1 through 21. Here we go. For we know, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 through 21. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house Amen. which is from heaven Amen to that. if so be that being clothed we shall not Amen. be found naked for we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened 
not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, Yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now I'd like to ask you to jump backwards to chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 1 through 16 of 2 Corinthians. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that's Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency 
of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The thought that God gave me for this lesson is if you leave this world, and lift up your eyes in hell, then it's your own fault. That goes for all of us. The title is how long is it going to take for you to submit to God? How long is it going to take for you to submit to God? Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and yes, shortcomings Lord. and faults and wrongs. Please, Lord, fill me with the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word. Tell me what to say, and it shall be said. Minister to all of your children you have watching. Minister to us as well, in Jesus' name. Don't leave us out. We need to get fed, too. So just have mercy on us. And minister this word and we thank you for it in Jesus name we thank you and we pray amen amen and amen again the thought is if you leave this world and lift up your eyes in hell then it's your own fault that goes for all of us and the title once again is how long is it going to take for you to submit to God? And as we know in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, no, chapter 5, verse 18, Paul mentioned that the Lord, who had reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, he's given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And as the Lord told brother Paul to write in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3 but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost excuse me verse 4 says in whom the God of this world who you must understand is Satan the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Let me paraphrase that and put it in layman's terms. The devil has blinded the minds of those that don't understand the gospel, those that are lost. To them, the gospel is hid because they don't understand the importance of accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So he has blinded their minds because he's a God of this world and ever Amen. since he stole it from Adam, Amen. he's able to do this. He's able to trick man and deceive man. He's able 
to knock men off their posts when they try to find God or after they have found God. And the gospel to them is hid because they're lost. They're lost. The devil has blinded their minds because if he didn't, then the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is God, would shine unto them. The ministry of reconciliation. The word ministry is from the Greek word diakonia and it's used 34 times in the New Testament and what it means is attendance as a servant etc. Figuratively this word means elemosynary which is defined as charitable, benevolent, gratuitous, aid. It also means aid, ministry does. It means official service. If you're taking notes, put official in parentheses. And also the diaconia is a service especially of the Christian teacher or technically of the diaconate which is translated into the English word deacon. Ministry also means office, relief, services. The word reconciliation is from the Greek word Catalage, or some pronounce it Catalage, and is used four times in the New Testament, and it means exchange. Figuratively, it means adjustment. In other words, restoration to, again, parentheses, the divine, in parentheses, favor. It also means atonement, one time, reconciliation two times, talking about the word catalage, two times it means reconciliation, one times it means atonement, and one times it means reconciling. This word means an adjustment of a difference. Reconciliation, restoration to favor, especially the restoration of the favor of God to sinners that repent and put their trust in the expiatory, which means purifying, propitiatory, or propitiatory, which means sacrificing. That's, that's what people put their trust in, the purifying and the sacrificing death of Jesus Christ. Man changes and is reconciled, but God does not change. You heard the brother apostle <laughs> you heard the brother apostle minister about prophets who build their ministry on a sign. They're not the only ones that do that. Bishops do it too. Some apostles do it too. Some evangelists do it too. Some teachers do it too. There are ministers who build their ministry on a sign oh because they want to seem great. They want to take the glory from God so that they can seem great great and and that's not good because that can cause you to get in trouble that can cause you to get in trouble and we don't want to get in trouble we don't want to get in trouble we don't want to disobey God. We don't want to anger God. We don't want to make God upset.
We don't want to do that. It's very important to not try to take God's glory. In the book of Numbers, chapter 20, verse 1 says, Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there, and there was no water for the congregation. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode or murmured with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us unto this evil place. It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. That was that big tent they used to put up in the wilderness everywhere they stopped. And they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Remember, in the beginning of your walk with God, those that walk with God, you remember when the Lord used to come to your every beck and call. Every time you used to call on him, how the Lord used to just appear. How things would be rough and you would cry out to God and ask him to help you and bless you and destroy your enemies and, and, and just handle everything that you're going through. And God used to come like that. But as you grew, once you got to a different level in the Lord, once you began to know him, once you really, really learned him, then he didn't always come so fast. Right here, the people in the wilderness complain. They always complain. Everyone complains about trials instead of us going through them. There's ways that you go through trials, you know. There's ways. There's things that you have to do. Some trials you have to fast through. Some trials you can just walk through. Some trials you pray through. Some trials you just be quiet through. There are different ways to go through every trial. These people chose to complain. Now here's, here's a problem because it was the devil that caused them to complain because the devil wants us to, to appear to be ungrateful to God for how God bless us. There's people that are hungry and God bless them with food. They don't even say their grace. There's people that God wake up every morning in their right mind. They don't even say, Lord, thank you for waking me up. When there's people dying in their sleep. There's people that God have blessed with jobs and homes and marriages and some people don't appreciate these things because they take advantage of them. Israel saw God do many miracles. I mean, it's easy for us to say this and we could we could very well be wrong because we're saying it on this side of scripture and not on their side and that is when the Lord opened up the Red Sea and we walked through it on dry ground, for me, that would have been enough. But that's what I say. It don't mean that that's true because if I was there, I might have been in a bad situation just like them. We all might have. There's people that say, well, if I was one of the apostles or one of the disciples or if I was around in Jesus' day and I walked with him, then I would have, I would have been the most faithful servant he had. Nah, maybe not. Maybe not. 
You can't say that. These people complained after they saw God do so much. And then they went against the prophet and the priest. The priest is equivalent to the pastor. So Moses being the prophet that was leading God's people and the pastor being at his side that was supposed to help him by watching over the sheep while the prophet spent time with God. Someone had to go to God on behalf of the people and then come back to the people on behalf of God and that is the prophet. See, the, that's why the pastor does not instruct the prophet because the pastor's responsibility is to watch over sheep. Brother, minister, brother, pastor, brother, bishop. Your responsibility is to watch over the sheep. Your responsibility is to be used by God to reconcile the sheep to God through Jesus Christ. You should be pointing them to Jesus Christ. You should be feeding them the word of God. You should get off of that pedestal and put God up there and point the people to him. And if there's a prophet that's there in the ministry, that prophet is supposed to be spending time, and the prophet is, in prayer, fasting, worship to God. To be able to help the people to come in the presence of God. That's the prophet's responsibility. One thing Moses did here that was good, and he took the pastor with him. Verse 6, And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. The tabernacle was consecrated. It was a place in which the Holy Ghost appeared often. A lot of ministries today, the majority of them, the Lord is not there. Where the Lord is, sin cannot reside. Sin cannot be. If you're in the ministry and there's a whole bunch of sin going on there and you might be wondering why are my prayers not being answered? Part of the reason is because when there's sin in the camp, it disrupts the movement of God. But when the place is consecrated unto the Lord, when the place is sanctified unto the Lord. Even in your home, if you dedicate a room to God and consecrate that room to God, if God gives you a room and you show him you appreciate it and you keep it clean and you honor that room and you sanctify that room and you spend time with God in that room, the Lord's presence will always be there. All you have to do every time you're in the jail, go to that secret spot. They went to the tabernacle and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Sometimes you don't need the Lord to just come. Sometimes his glory, his greatness can just appear and that would be enough because where his greatness is, his power is going to be. The Lord spoke to Moses, the prophet, which goes to show that when the Lord has a prophet and a bishop, which is the same thing as pastor, when the Lord have a prophet and a pastor or a bishop together, the bishop got to understand when God send the prophet in your midst, there's a spot that you have to step mm -hmm. off of. You have to sit down. You have to step back. And let God minister to the prophet because the prophet was sent there. Like the apostle said, when God sends a prophet and a prophet is to a ministry, it is an assignment. They are on assignment. Amen, brother? They are on assignment. They're not there to join the congregation. They're not there to join the ministry. Because if they're an active prophet and prophetess, 
then that means God already gave them a work to do. Sure, we all still study and train, but we all study and train where the Lord have us at when he's called us in ministry. When people ask me, Brother Apostle, do you go fellowship or sit under somebody and every man that's by himself is not of God and that's not the will of the Lord? Well, you speak for yourself because we're still living in Bible days. And when God called Ezekiel, he was accountable to who? God. When he called Jeremiah, he was accountable to who? God. When the disciples who became apostles were walking with Jesus Christ, they were accountable to who? God. They asked Jesus, why is it your disciples don't fast? He said, they don't need to because they're with me. I'm here. Now, when I leave, they'll have to fast. Why? Because once he go back to heaven, of course, his spirit, the Holy Ghost, who is God, he would be here, but he would lead them in worship and prayer to God. When you are in ministry, you are accountable to God. Man cannot carry you from level to level, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Man can't do that. Man cannot fill you with the Holy Ghost and baptize you in fire. Man cannot even teach you how to speak in unlearned tongues because those tongues are unlearned. It is important that you develop a relationship with God. When you develop a relationship with God, it don't take so much effort to reach him. It don't take so much effort to reach him when you develop a relationship with him. Now, if you don't have a relationship with God, you might have to do all kinds of things to reach him. The Lord spoke to Moses and here's what he told the prophet. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod, check, from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock, check. And he said unto them, now here's where he went off because God says speak to the rock. He didn't say speak to the people. But he said unto them, hear now, ye rebels, must we? Fetch you water out of this rock. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. Now, Scripture says in verse 12 of Numbers chapter 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. Now I could just see in the spirit. Imagine God doing this. Has God ever did this to you? Has God ever, ever, ever did this to you? Has he ever? He's done it to me. There's been times that I have went outside of the perimeter and the Lord said he's done that to you right he has had to when you walk with God he even corrects you in your error when you're wrong now it's funny some might wonder well if he committed a sin then why did water come from the rock. Well, water came from the rock because God taught him how to do that before. He taught Moses.
how to bring water from the rock. The reason that water came from the rock is because God taught Moses how to make water come from the rock by striking it. Now, the Lord taught me how to pray against rain. So that's something for me that's very easy to do because the Lord taught me how to do it. So whenever I'm out in the field doing street and outreach ministry, we don't, I don't, that's me too. That is me. I'm sure y'all know by now, that's me. I don't use an umbrella. I don't even own one. Because when the Lord got me out doing street and outreach ministry, he don't want me to get wet, especially after he done dressed me and everything. So the Lord taught me how to pray against rain. Amen? How to pray against rain. So that way it stops. People that know me are aware of that. People that know me are very aware of that. So when Moses struck this rock, water came out because he did this before. But here's the difference. Even though God might teach you how to do this, there's times that, again, God is not going to use you to do the same thing the same way. He's going to use you a different way to get the miracle out of the same situation. Don't be so stuck and stayed in one move of God because God has a plethora of methods. There's things God to do that you couldn't even fathom. Again, when you get to be stronger in the Lord and more mature, he's not going to come every time like that. There's some time it's going to take a while. There's some time you're going to be saying, Lord, are you hearing me? Lord, where you at? Lord, I'm praying and fasting and crying. Why are you not answering me? It's not that he don't hear you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 24, one of my favorite scriptures, <laughs> and also one of my most challenging ones. 65, verse 24, God said, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. True on that. He said, and it, this is Isaiah 65, 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. <laughs> Why? Well, he'll hear because while we're in the middle of our trial, while we're in the midst of all this, while we're going through all of this, while we're struggling and walking and, and going through and waiting and crying and fasting and praying, sometimes we need to talk to somebody because the trial can get hard. When you're going through stuff because of people, the trial can get hard. So you need somebody to talk to. And it's hard to talk to the average person because if they weren't there to hear God tell you anything, then they may very well challenge it. Well, you know, I don't believe God would do it that way. And I don't think that God would say this. And I don't feel that God would say that. Now, when you're a prophet, you know that there's, well, when you're a seasoned prophet, you know there's certain words that should not be in your vocabulary. One of them is, I think. That should not be in your vocabulary because we prophets are not led by thought. Another word that shouldn't be used in your vocabulary is, I feel. I'm feeling that God is, well, I feel like God wants to, or I feel like God, no, because God, your feelings are not what God uses to minister to you because your feelings can be deceptive. Then you have the ones that say, well, to me, 
To me, this means that. To me, uh, God would do this. To me, you know, or then you got those people that always tell you how God is always so with them, but their walk and their language and their level of anointing and, I'm going to say, intelligence don't always fit that. There are people, God could use you to minister to them, and they'll say, I know. That spirit is a terrible spirit because that spirit will cause God to be quiet. Not only will that spirit cause God to be quiet, but the Holy Ghost said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, here's what he said. Chapter 14, uh, he said in verse 12, it should be 14, 14 and 14, but it's not. I'm trying to, I'm trying to thank God, yet in church, brother, but Lord, let me go back. He that speaks in the unknown to likewise and say you in trouble again. Therefore, speak it, even so forth. Wherefore, let him speak it another time that he may interpret. If a man speak it, there it is right there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 29. Let the, let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. Verse 32 says, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. The Lord can tell you to be quiet when people got the I know spirit. If God tells you something and somebody I know, then it, the Holy Ghost can silence you and that anointing will be silent as well. The word won't come out. And that's how it goes. It's very important to understand the anointing. Very important. When Moses struck that rock and God said come here verse 12 and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron here's what God said because ye believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them that was exclusion the Lord told Moses, you blew it. You won't go into the promised land. He told Moses that. Now, it's important to also understand when God called Moses in the book of Exodus, chapter 3, when Moses went and investigated that burning bush in chapter 3 when God called him here's what God said verse 4 and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here am I and he said draw not nigh hither Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, 
unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. He didn't say, and bring them into the promised land. That wasn't for him to do. But he said, to bring my people out of bondage. I thank God for the fivefold ministry. Because God uses all five gifts, gifts differently. They're not all used the same. It is sin. It's wrong for an evangelist to tell a prophet, you don't praise God enough. It's wrong for a prophet and a prophetess to tell an evangelist, you don't worship God. It is wrong for a pastor to tell an apostle how to handle sheep. It is wrong for the apostle to tell the pastor What is it wrong for the apostle to tell the pastor? Because apostles do cultivate the gift of the pastoral office. Thank you, Lord. It's wrong for the apostle to tell the pastor, don't be compassionate. Yeah. It is wrong for anyone to tell the teacher, don't be dogmatic. Don't be so dry. Why is it you always got to teach women that are married to apostles and married the teachers, some of them say that. I know one precious sister who said to me one time, why you talk to me like I'm your pupil? And I, I said, you're not my pupil. No. But see, when a man is a teacher of the gospel, what do you expect him to do? If he was drinking, carousing, running the street, getting high, smoking weed, cigarettes, or crack, or sniffing dope, or whatever, is that what you would rather he do? The man of God and the woman of God is going to be committed to God. Yet, yeah, the five-fold ministry, all five of the gifts do different things. But when they are teamed together, then they make up the fivefold ministry which every ministry every service every bit of spiritual aid should operate with the fivefold ministry involved because if not the ministry becomes lopsided like the Lord used the apostle to say is wrong to build your ministry on a gift. Because then you'll do like Moses. When Moses smote the rock twice, but before that he said, here now ye rebels must we fetch you water. He took God's glory. And when he took God's glory, he lost his place. He lost going into the promised land. Now, now that's a sermon all on its own. Because the deep thing about that, being used by God to lead people, knowing you're not going into the promised land. That's, that's forfeiting. There's a, a teaching on that. That would be a blessing to hear. The doctrine of forfeiting. Esau sold his birthright for something to eat. He forfeited. Then he sought it back with tears. There are people in covenants, whether it's marriage, business, relationship with their children, whatever the case may be, to where you have forfeited that covenant because you didn't do something God's way. I hate to say this, even children, 
You can betray a parent because you didn't do it God's way. You can lose the respect of your children because you didn't do it God's way. You can lose your job because you didn't do it God's way. You can lose stuff because you don't do it God's way. It is very, very important to understand this. Because imagine where Adam and Eve had everything. And then because of being disobedient to God, they got kicked out of heaven, out of the garden. Not heaven, but the garden. Because the garden was here in the earth realm. They got kicked out of the garden. Lucifer got kicked out of heaven. The third of the angels that were given unto him, they lost their place that they were made in, their first estate. The Lord don't want us to forfeit. He wants to bless us. He wants to minister to us. Let him minister to you. Glorify him by what you do. Lastly, if you look back in the book of Exodus again, chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3. See the anointing will wear you down. Look at that. The anointing will wear you down. And he will, the Holy Ghost will cause you to rest. He will also cause you to wake up. Father, I need you to bless me. Sometimes you got to pray for yourself. I need you to bless me, Lord. Please forgive me for all my sins and shortcomings and my faults and my wrongs. I need you to anoint me. I need you to empower me. I need you to stir up the gift that is in thy servant. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, Father. Thou hast called me. Make me usable and use me. Thank you for how you use me. And I ask, Lord, that you hear all my prayer. The things that you've been blessing me to fast for. I ask, Father, that you answer those prayers. Yes, stir me up in the name of Jesus because I need you. I need you, Lord. Can't do nothing without you. Can't do anything without you. Please, Father, have mercy. Have mercy. The Lord told Moses in Exodus 3, in verse 8, the Lord said, And I am come down and deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flung with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. God was telling Moses where I'm going to bring you. There might be, there are people there, but I'm going to remove them. I'm living in a place where I got neighbors that are unsaved. They're drunks. They're, they're, they're drug addicts. 
Some of them even try to sell a drug or two. I, I look and, and, and it's something how people that don't even really like each other will get together and they will, they will come against you thinking that they have the upper hand. Now, again, in the natural, here I am a master of Kung Fu of over 12 different animal styles. Somebody told me before I was very dangerous. But I noticed something. When you come in the Lord, you have to be very docile. You cannot, you cannot be the way you were when you were in the world. Because the Lord says, vengeance is mine. So you can't avenge yourself. You have to depend on the Lord. And sometimes you got to pray your way through some serious stuff. God said he would drive out these other nations from the land that he had for his people. In Exodus 33, verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee. And I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. God said that he would drive them out. He'll drive them out. And he's not playing. We need to trust him. Sometimes it's hard going through a trial. But we need to trust him. Because he'll see us through. We need to trust him. In the mighty name of Jesus. I need prayer still. Let me pray again. Brother. Brother. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, again I ask you to forgive me for my sins and shortcomings and faults and wrongs. Please help me, Lord. I need your strength because I can't do nothing on my own. I need you to move in a mighty way. You've orchestrated all of this. I need you to move in a mighty, mighty way. You bless me to try to serve you, to try to walk with you. Anoint my head, anoint my heart. Keep me before you. The prayer request on my fasting list, please, Father, bring it to pass. Please bring it on to pass. That I could give you the glory, the thanks, and the praise. Stir up the gift in me, Lord. Yes. Stir up the gift and strengthen it in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. In Jesus' name. It's a blessing when you watch yourself. Sometimes it's good to see how God sees you. Thank you, Lord. 
Bless thy servant. Stir up thy servant. It's important to trust God and just keep praying. It's important to get in his word because that's the food we are to eat to feed our spirit with. That's the original soul food. Stay in prayer to build a relationship with him. Fast to connect with him. That we may talk with him. That would keep us from stumbling and falling as much. You ready to pray, brother? You ready to pray so we can close out? I pray that this has been a great blessing to you all. And the Cash App link is right on the screen. The ministry's phone number is up here, so you can call for prayer 24 hours. Brother, you ready to pray? So we can... You ready to pray? You can call the ministry at 475 300 3850 24 hours. And again, I hope that this has been a great blessing to you. What the Lord used Apostle to do, and me the prophet, what he used me to do. Again, don't get caught up in the theatrics. But the Lord blessed me to be able to give him an excellent work, an excellent offering, which is my service unto the Lord for his glory. Come on, brother, let's pray. We got to close out. All right. Ready? Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, brother, bow your head. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and faults and wrongs. Please keep us before you. Anoint us, minister to us. Let us have a blessed day. Let us get some rest and then to get up and work for you another day. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We love you, Lord. Please hear our prayer. Please honor the prayers that are going for us. Please, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Please, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for this yes, word, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for how you move, Lord. Yes, Thank you for how you use us. Thank you, Lord. All of your children. I want you to use all of us to stand before you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Will you use us to minister, Lord? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We give you yes, the praise. Lord. We honor you, Father. We glorify you. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Replenish us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Restrengthen us, Lord. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anoint us, Lord. Forgive oh, us for hallelujah. all of our sins and our shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Lord. Forgive all of the people in the prayer box, all those that are watching the Please, TV. Please, Father. Please forgive us, Lord. In Jesus' Please, name. Please, Lord. Forgive us all, Lord. We rebuke the devil. Lord. Yes. We plead the blood against him. Yes, Lord. We bind him, Lord. In yes. The earth realm. 
Yes. And we've already bound in heaven. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. We command him to go back to the pit of yes. hell for where he Hallelujah. We render him powerless. Yes, Lord. We loose all our stuff from him. Yes, pit. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory, Have mercy, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy angels, Lord. Yes. Lord. Holy oh, dispense angels. Anointed angels. And into the earth now. Yes, Send Lord. them to see about this prayer request, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Thank Lord. you, Father. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory. Jesus' name. Yes. Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you and we pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. 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 Yes. Good show, brother. Good show. So what you what you think? Uh, Bless you. I tell you, that's that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. All that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food on my table.